a video on fitting park safe sensors. I'm going to be fitting them to an Audi A3. It's a 2009 Sportback, a 2 litre TFSI Quattro. Um, so, first things first, what I've started out to do, because um, there is, probably don't need to take the bumper off, but I am actually going to do that. Um, just because there's a trim to be removed here, this bit, to feed all the wires through. There's a few things you've got to remove, but this is one of the last bits, and that way you can feed all the wires through, but it's very, very difficult to get this off from what I've been told without breaking it. So what I'm probably going to do is remove the bumper, um, so it's going to be a lot easier to do that. So first things first, what I'm doing anyway is measuring up where I want them. So here, um, the example is 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 meters um, gap between the sensors, maximum, and then a height of around 0 0.5 to 0 0.8. So I've gone for roughly um, 500, oh, um, sorry, 50 centimeters up. That's where I'm starting. So I've put masking tape along. Um, along a line sort of roughly here you can see I've done some rough measurements that I didn't didn't work out in the end um, and then I did a, a line down from the middle of the car which was here that was the middle and then um, I measured roughly 7.75 inches which is roughly um, 40 centimeters so then I did a gap from here, and then a gap from here, and that should all roughly be for, uh, around that'll be 15 inches. So I sent punch the holes, and then drilled them with this. So it's like a pilot, and then. It's got a 19 millimeter hole saw cutter on the end. When I drilled it, I had masking tape over, and it did seem to protect um, the bumper. But I mean, the holes have come out pretty clean. I've had a measure, and they're pretty accurate within a mil or two. So it's not bad at all, really. And the positions from behind look like roughly good positions. Um, so I'm now gonna remove the bumper. And I will talk through the process of removing it. Alright, so I think I've undone all the screws to remove the bumper. So, first of all, I went and removed the rear lights on both sides. So they were held in. There's a cap covering them, so pop it off. I used the screwdriver out of the tool kit here, which is in here. So I pop that off, and then you use this. You can use the flat, flat blade, and as you get close to um, it coming off the thread, you want to put your hand in so you don't drop it behind here. So take that off. And then what you want to do is from this side, push it um, and it will disengage one of the lugs here. And then you want to get your hand underneath because there's two prongs which fit into here and pull and do that sort of at the same time that should pop out. So do that on both sides. And then I believe there's three T25 screws. Might be able to see one there one there and one there remove them from both sides um, and then after that there is two screws underneath the car which is so from the bottom looking at it from the bottom here it's underneath and one of them is there if you can see that and then the other one is their left and right side to so remove both of them and then t25 again one screw here and then a longer one which goes down here it's very long so yeah, see the length here and then the last one you just got to be a bit careful with it's these nuts here 10 mils which i think have to be removed as well 
you have to pop a cap off from um, the boot here. So you're inside the boot, you pop the cap off. You won't probably be able to see in there, but there's a 10 millimeter nut, which was there. Um, it's very hard to sort of get out without dropping it. So what I ended up doing, if you can see, is as I got to the end of the thread, I put some uh, blue tack in. It's obviously gonna be hard to get out, but I thought I'd do that rather than losing the nut um, to remove it and it did work. And I'll do the same um, when I put it back on. I'll, I'll put the nuts on the blue tack so it shouldn't fall through. And it's probably best to use a, a deep socket because you're going in from here and you're just round about that sort of area. So you can see mine is sort of fairly deep. So now I should be able to remove the bumper. Um, and I'll get back to you when I've done right, So the bumper is now off. What I did to get it off was started off in these corners here and pulled and popped the panels which are located here which you should be able to sort of see they slotted into these positions so I pulled these out first both sides and then started working along these sections so just easing them pulling them out and I did get stuck in this section here with the clips which were in here so in the end I just ended up pushing this down slightly and then pulling the bumper up and pulling it out. It's a bit awkward to do with one person but we got there in the end. So bumper's now off. I'm just going to move that and get on to the next right, So I'm now removing this trim piece so when I can put this back on, this was the whole reason why I couldn't get there. Um, I wanted to not take the bumper off and take this off so I could feed all the wires through but I I know this probably doesn't cost much, but I couldn't find a way to get out without breaking it pretty much. So now I've got it off, I can access. And what I'm doing is I've got a little um, plastic tool for a trim tool and I'm sort of getting it there, pushing it in. I love my foot here and then I'll be pulling up while I'm pushing down and then you're able to get them all out. So if you do that, so I've just put the parking sensors roughly in place. Um, just laid out the wires and as you can see from the front if I can get it to hold here I'm not sure if I can be able to Alright, should be able to hold now You can see they're all in place, they look pretty um, well spaced out and same distance top to bottom and a pretty good colour match as you probably would have seen in my last video I painted them not too long ago so they look good now as you can probably see these just clip in so what I probably will do is put some sort of glue or something around these probably non-corrosive silicon rubber just around the edges just to make sure it stays in place because um, you know they at the minute possibly could easily pop out this is how I've rooted them so far. Sort of a bit of a curve when it comes out and I've found some clips to hold the um, sort of threaded terminals in. Um, and fed them along. I probably tied it up with some tie wraps as well to keep it a bit neater. And I've come to here, this is where I'll be feeding it up into the rear light and through and then the control box will be somewhere here. Um, and then got all of them at their maximum length at the minute and I just labelled them um, on the connectors uh, one two three and four I'm not sure if they probably won't be in order so we've got one two three and four just so when I plug it in I can't remember if it's a b c d or one two three four on the control box but I'm going to have the control box this side so the wire or the sensor which will be closest will be a or number one, two or B, three or C, and then four or D, um, and they'll plug into their spots. This trim here and this trim here, so I can get access to the wires here, and I'm going to feed the control, I will feed the wires through and have the control box sat in here. So to do that, you're going to have to remove the parcel shelf, um, put this seat down, this one, and then there's a screw in here, you remove that one and then there is pop 
this up and there's a screw, two screws which you're gonna to need to remove. One which will allow you to pull this section away here. So you can pull that away and then one which will allow you to remove this section. And it's a matter of pulling it away, listening to the plastic click um, or to snap out of their positions and then there'll be electrical connection here for the light to undo. I found it's best to use a flat bay blade on one side, push into it and then like pull pull as you're pushing in with a flat blade and that'll come out. So remove that now. So I removed the piece which was here. It slides into these prongs there and there. So it's just a simple matter of really, you know, tugging from have one hand there, one hand there and pull up and tug. Um, you gotta give it a pretty hard tug and that'll come off. Then there was the three screws that um I was on about. So there was one up here in this area, if I remember where was it? Um one up, I can't remember now. There was one around this area, and then there's one here which I was on about, and then one behind there. And then um, you pull it out, you've got the light switch to disconnect, and then you've got to get it over this point and then pull back, and it will come out. So, the next thing you need to remove this um, sub box, so there's three screws. This one, probably 10 millimeters, this one, that one, and then that one. So I'm going to remove them now. So the sub is out now, so it was just the three screws that was on about. One there, one there, or nuts. <clears throat> that one's a hex, to all 10 mil. Make sure that's undone, which you'd already done, and then that's for the sub to undo. <clears throat> and then I'm going to be putting the control box somewhere in this area, um, and I'll be feeding the wiring through this grommet here, which should fit nicely. Um, so right, I'll get to doing that. Right, so next thing to do, I'm going to wire it in roughly and then just wire the power and just make sure everything's working all right. So I've, I haven't done this neatly yet, but just to get the wires through. Um, I'm running and going to be running them through the fan. I'm going to tidy it up, but just for the time being, I've got it all connected. Um, and now I've just removed the green clip up there and then removed this clip, which was here. Um, and pulled the grommet through with the wiring in so it's loose and I've cut this bit of the tape off so these wires are loose and I'm going to wire this power so what we want is the reverse light power so the line um, where you put the car into reverse and then power is applied which um, powers the rear light so we're going to red is positive and black is negative or neutral um, ground so what I'm going to do is the brown wire on, on this car anyway, the A3 2009, um, this is a Sportback model. The brown wire is ground, so I'll be wiring that to my black. So I just realised as I was doing this, one of the videos that I was looking at to change the sensors, I think it was maybe a slightly earlier model. I'm not sure if it's to do with my car's automatic or the cluster of the light. So my reverse light is actually on the tail gate up there. I don't know if you can see that. I can't put it down at the minute. But basically where I was looking at this loom to tap into the power, I couldn't, the only thing that, yeah, you know, I basically couldn't find the 12 volt feed for the reverse light, but that's because it's not even in this cluster. So it's actually here for the reverse light, which is an obvious uh, thing, but I just messed up there. So I've been tracing the wires back. I've ended up removing this pillar here. So what I've done is removed, there's a torque screw, which is in the back here, and I've removed that and then pulled this away. And then what I've done is pulled this also. There's three clips um, here, so I've pulled that away just to get access to the loom. Um, and as I was tracing the wires back, you might be able to see this wire here. That wire is the one which goes to your back light cluster. And there's another red and blue. Um, this one here, which I've just sort of made a slight incision into just to remove, just to double check that I'm correct with my uh, assumption and with the tracing back of the wiring. So probably not gonna be able to to do it because I've only got two hands. I'm trying to record as well, but. 
I plug that in here and then I'm basically going to touch that on the little wire which I've stripped partly. I don't know if you could hear that but that's buzzing through his continuity check is correct and that is the wire which I need to strip so what I'm going to do I've got a scalpel blade I'm just gonna if you can see it just gonna run round that wire with a scalpel and then with my nails peel it back um, and then I'll, I'll cut some of the wire off as it sorry the insulation off not the wire I'm just gonna wrap the wire around um, and I'm probably gonna still keep this point um, as my earth just because I've already stripped it now so I'll have the earth running um, black cable here to the earth then I'll have the positive going to the red and blue up here okay all right so I've now wired up here I've got my power for the control module for the parking sensors wired in with the red and blue which I was telling you about from the tailgate for the reverse light and I've put some insulation I've twisted the wire soldered it put insulation tape over um, just in case it you know it touches any wires you don't want it short out um, yep yeah. and then I ended up using um, the because I already stripped the brown wire down here I ended up using the the uh, earth or naught bolts down here which has worked out okay because I've split them up so I haven't got them close to each other where I've stripped them um, and then I've just um, used a tie wrap there and fed my wires through and then I've actually it came with a velcro sticker so I've um, with 3m tape on the back so I've put that back there and I know it's it's awkward to access but I can still pull all the cables out I can unhook or take it off the velcro and then if I need to change with the, set, the settings on the control module I can still do that um, and then so now that's all done just um, and I have just fitted the bumper as well uh, following the steps to, to take it off in reverse um, and I'm just I'll just show you I'll put it in reverse now Heard that bleep? Ah, of course. Let me shut that. So I've rooted um, the sound up here. I might put it in a like a, a space where it's not easy to see. Um, as you can see, fitted it all back up. There is the sensors, um, and then as I come closer. So that is that and you can see you might be able to see that's where I've got the sounder so take this out reverse so I've I ended up feeding the wires through the air duct here um, so I can't see a problem with using the air duct to feed the wires through and then um, the buzzer I have coming out of, if you can see it here, I've tie wrapped it here, this wire is the buzzer, and then the buzzer goes up to here, which I'll put through through the pillar, the C pillar, the rear one, and I'll probably have it around about there, or I might try and hide it, I'm not sure, but it's easy to hear it when it's there. Now it's just to put everything back together. So I just um, sort of forgot to add a final um, part to this video. So just while you're in the cabin, um, put it into reverse. Takes probably about three seconds for it to activate. 
hear a beep about now. And then as you reverse, So I'm just going to turn this off, um, drop it further forward. Turn the engine off. Ignition on, put it in reverse. See the reverse lights. See the reverse lights are on there. Um, might be hard to see, but the sensors are there. You can hear it starting to go off. So, as I come closer. coming further away. Alright, so I hope this video helps anyone who's planning to do this. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>